Uh, this is Mayor Buckley on the best show ever, the Maryland Crabs podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Hello there, this is John Frenet with the Maryland Crabs. I'm flying solo again this week, and this week I jumped over to Awald Road and sat down with Paul Jacobs, who is one of the owners of the Annapolis Bow Show, and he was the general manager for many, many years before actually buying it. And we wanted to sort of see if we could take some of the mystery out of the boat shows. We all know in October the boat shows roll in and tons of people are here and traffic's a bitch and everything else, but a lot of people don't know what all they do actually contribute to our local economy and specifically to our city. One thing I didn't know was the history of the boat shows, how long they've been around, and how revered, and I don't think that's too strong of a word, they are in the boating industry, and truly what an anchor, pardon the pun, they are to the maritime industry here in Annapolis. We talk a little bit about their history, we talk a little bit about their ownership, where they're moving to, how it's grown since the very first show, how he'd like to see it grow in the future, and how they were able to weather the horrible recession we had, gosh, I guess it's about 10 years ago. We did also talk about two boat shows that are coming up fairly quickly. The first one is April 20th to the 22nd in Annapolis, and this is the Annapolis Spring Sailboat Show. will be held down there on City Dock, and it is not nearly as large as the fall boat shows. And this is a really a good chance to check out some sailboats if you are interested in getting out on the water this season. Of course, they'll give you a chance to dream as well. The following weekend, April 27th to 29th, they have the Bay Bridge Boat Show, which is over on Kent Island. It's at the Bay Bridge Marina, which is just off the bridge when you go east. And this is purely power boat shows. There's about 400 power boats there. And again, it's more designed to get you out on the water this season. There will be boats that you can get on, you can climb on, uh, take them out for a spin, see how they feel. And that'll happen at both shows. If you're interested in going to one of the boat shows, today is your lucky day. Be one of the first five people to email me at info at themarylandcrabs.com and simply ask for a pair of tickets to the boat show and specify which one, whether you want the Bay Bridge Boat Show, which is power boats, or the Annapolis Spring Sailboat Show, which is sailboats. And I will send a pair of tickets out to you. They gave me a bunch to give away, so I think this is a perfect way to do it. If you want more information on either of the shows or the fall shows, head on over to annapolisboatshows.com. And then when you're done that, make sure you head on over to Apple Podcasts or Google Play or wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you give us a rating and also do me a favor, share this podcast out with your friends. Let them know about the Maryland Crabs. That is how we get better. That is how we grow. And actually, the more subscribers we have and the more listens we have and all of that, that's how we move up in the rankings and get more visibility in all these people that do host our podcasts. So that is much appreciated. Again, if you have any questions, any suggestions, complaints, shoot them over to us at info at themarylandcrabs.com. You can tweet us at MD Crabs Podcast. Head on over to Facebook and look for our page or our group at the Maryland Crabs Podcast. And I guess that's about it. That's enough ways to contact us. Anyhow, let's get into it with Paul Jacobs from the Annapolis Boat Shows right after this message. Hi, this is Randy. And Claudia Boldiga. Please join us and our presenting sponsor, RXNT, on Saturday, April 28th, on AAMC's South Campus for Denim and Diamonds Bash. Proceeds will benefit mental health and addiction services in our community. Now more than ever, we need to focus on this critical need. The bash sold out last year, so don't delay and join us for this fabulous night under the stars. Can't make the party? You can still help by purchasing a raffle ticket. This year's raffle is a stunning four-piece amethyst jewelry collection donated by Cezanne Jewelers, valued at $5,000. Only 100 tickets will be sold for the raffle, so don't miss out. For event or raffle tickets, go to aamcdenimanddiamonds.org. Thanks for your support of Anne Arundel Medical Center's efforts to improve the availability of mental health and addiction services throughout our community. Remember, it's not just a party. It's a party with a purpose. 
Spring is waiting outside your door, and it's time to make your lawn and garden beautiful again with Homestead Gardens. Their experts will show you how to make a safe lawn for kids and pets using the area's largest selection of organic lawn solutions. Share family fun and satisfaction growing food, flowers, and shrubs together. Visit Homestead Gardens in Davidsonville or Severna Park, Maryland, and go to homesteadgardens.com for deals, events, and workshops. Live life outdoors this season with Homestead gardens we are here on awald road overlooking back creek with paul jacobs how are you today i'm fine how are you good last time we met i think we were on a bumpy dock in high winds with a rising tide and a bunch of people running around going i can't believe this is happening on the day of the october (laughs) boat show but there's never a boat show that goes off without some sort of a hitch there's always something yeah it's, 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 and weather weather obviously we're an outdoor show it always impacts us somehow so it, it's it's interesting absolutely well paul jacobs is the general manager of the annapolis boat shows and u.s boat shows i guess is the corporate name of the entity we we have several corporate names the the, the fall shows are in the names of united states sailboat show incorporated and united states powerboat show incorporated so there are two different corporations that, that are actually the operating entities for those for those two shows we have a, a, a a, an overarching corporate designation as the United States Yacht Shows Incorporated, yes. Okay. And you are responsible for, uh, if I'm a cynical Annapolitan, disrupting traffic in October. That's us. Uh, <laughs> and if I am a sympathetic Annapolitan, I say, and also the guy that comes marching into City Hall uh, to pay back for the disruption in That's October, also in, us. <laughs> in, in, in November. Yes. And it's so funny. I mean, there's a love-hate relationship with, with the boat shows. And I think, you know, ob- obviously you know that. I mean, there's the old joke with the, the sailboaters don't tip very well and the powerboaters tip overly well on the restaurant thing. There's, we love them all. Um, undoubtedly, you bring tens of thousands of visitors into the city every single year. Um, I think I'd heard at one point that the boat shows uh, come close to doubling the population for is that right? Uh, certain certain times. But yeah. what's your attendance in a? Well, we uh, you know we don't really know exactly how many people come. We know how many people pay to get in the boat show, right. but then we also have um, we have three to five thousand people that work there a day so it's 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 sure. you know it's it's a very large number they these people stay for two weeks uh, in many cases and it's an entire industry i mean it's international they come from all over all, all over the world to attend it they come they bring their boats from all over the world so it's it's a very big deal in the maritime industry and particularly in the sailing world uh, we are the last one standing and and that's the in water in water boat shows we were the first ones we they were invented here in annapolis in 1970 and uh, with the sailboat show and now we're the um the last remaining all sailboat show in america why is annapolis so important to the sailboat thing i mean i mean everyone they sort of leave off annapolis and they just make that the assumption that it's annapolis oh are you going up to the boat show and i've heard i've heard that in fort lauderdale i've heard that in other markets right why is annapolis so important well again it was the first it became the biggest it uh uh, it, the, Annapolis has always be, been synonymous with uh, with sailboat shows, and uh, that just has continued. Uh, this is the place where the sailing industry, in particular, holds their dealer meetings. They bring in these people from around the world. They bring buses of people down from Quebec, Canada. They, uh, we have 27 foreign countries, and and everybody comes here. And they go to the other boat shows, and they shop online. They do all those things, but then they come to Annapolis to to place their purchases and and to place their orders for their boats. So. So what, and it's a funny time of year to have a boat show, right? In October yeah. in, in Annapolis. Sure. But what they do is they have every every boat to look at that they would like to have an option to buy, and then they place their orders. Those boats are then built over the winter time and delivered to them in the spring or summer uh, the following year. In some cases, it takes longer for the higher end boats, but right. Right, I'm still waiting for that fifteen million one dollar one I ordered in October. It's still yeah, it'll they're, be a while. They're, they're, I think they're puffing out a scratch or something, <laughs> something like that. But you guys do sell, uh, and, and I say you, you don't sell, but I mean your exhibitors do sell quite a few boats at these shows. They sell, I will say, hundreds of boats in that five days in in, in October, which is a sounds like a very large brag. But um, what happens is that not only do you sell the boats to the consumer. Whole, the whole consumer group, but then you've got the dealers that are coming from around the world to place their orders for their dealer boats as well. So, uh, so, so if Beneteau sells, I'm just using this as an example. If Beneteau sells 60 boats that weekend, uh, they might sell half of them to consumers and half of them to dealers, or there might be 40 to consumers and 20 something like that. 
and Beneteau is the largest manufacturer of boats in the world. So, so a dealer, sales. a dealer will actually purchase boats here. I mean, they don't have a, a direct. Of course, they have a direct. They have access to them directly. But, but this but allows them where to they get to see them. Okay. And, and you've got you've got the, their whole in, their whole line of of twelve or thirteen models that are shown right here in one show. Uh, if you're a consumer that would like to buy a, let, let's say you want to buy a forty foot family cruiser uh, semi-custom or production boat where would you go to do, where, to see them well you'd come to annapolis because every single one of them virtually is being is true. being displayed here and that's so you, true you, you, could, can, you could order it online but you can't you can't kick the tires you, you, you can't, you know, can't sit can't down on touch the, it feel it see how it how it feels and they're in the water in their natural environment so it's a perfect opportunity to, to uh, see what the boat's really going to be like well you don't only disrupt traffic in october though you do have, we do have a couple more boat shows coming up. We've got the Annapolis Spring Sailboat Show, which is in a, it's a little bit of a downscale. It's not nearly as large as the fall show. And By comparison, it's very small, actually. It's, uh, I mean, it, it, you know, if, if we've got uh, 250 boats in the fall show, we have 70 in the, in the spring show. It's a, it's, a, it's a smaller footprint, a smaller boat show. It's, uh, you know, these are boats in the springtime that would be available to sail away on Monday. Okay. Uh, most of these boats are all, virtually all these boats are available for immediate sale. There are new boats represented there and also some brokerage boats that will be in, the, in there in the, in the uh, springtime. So it's a different kind of show completely, but um, it starts the season and the fall show ends the season. And the fall, the fall show has been around, you said, since the 70s, right? And then the spring boat show is fairly new. I think we're in our fifth year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in, in, for the spring show. So this would be the fifth year. Uh, it's just kind of getting its its sea legs, <laughs> you right. might say, and becoming established uh, as a as a go to event in the springtime. But uh, n not nearly what the fall boat show is. Right. Well, it's it's coming up, and it's it is strictly sailboat here in Annapolis, and it's April 20th to the 22nd. We go, drawing the same type of people here. I mean, are these or is this more of a consumer oriented show? It, it's yeah, certainly more consumer oriented and a little more regional than the than the fall show would be. If if we look at our uh, ticket sales in the fall to consumers, we're we're talking about uh, all 50 states and 27 foreign countries. In the springtime, we're talking about the Mid Atlantic region, getting uh, uh, some people that would come in from the Midwest and and uh, New England and the Carolinas and that sort of thing. But it's it's not uh, it doesn't have the global reach, doesn't have the geographic reach that the fall shows do. Uh, the other thing that we do, though, that does um, draw people from, from far distances is the Cruisers University that we um, started about about six years ago, too. Okay, so what's Cruisers University? Cruisers University is four days of classes uh, geared directly to those people who are thinking that it would be fun to live on a boat and uh, cruise around either near or far, do the East Coast, do around the world, do the Caribbean. I sort of have some background in that. So, uh -huh. uh, and, and I had, when, when my family and I decided, well, when, when I decided and sold out the idea to my family that, that we should go cruising and live on a boat for a while, I had no experience. I had no way to really learn from that except reading Cruising World magazine and some things like that. So and read books and now these people will come to Cruisers University in the springtime or Cruisers U University in the fall, and take a customize a, a one two three four day program and uh, learn from some of the, the top experts in their field. And this is primarily just for living and long term cruising. It's for or, yes, primarily, but it's also got a lot of a lot of electrical and systems classes. Uh, there's a diesel class that sells out every year. There are navigation classes. There's safety at sea. There are all kinds of classes that that are very practical for anybody who is going to spend time on a boat, and whether it be in the Chesapeake or Timbuktu. across the Atlantic, right? Yeah. Okay, if I if I'm not a sailor, do I've got do I and I'm thinking about the idea. Do is, is Cruisers University an option for me? Is that for Cruisers University would be very or should i be going to cruisers kindergarten <laughs> well no actually we've got you, again it's customizable and and every any there there are four class times per day each class time has four or five different class options uh one one program that's been great and uh very uh, very popular has been the cruising women's class and so women are being taught by women and they become more more comfortable, and they warm up to the idea of living on a boat. They feel more empowered to, to get out there and be a part of the crew, and uh, they just come away with this great feeling of they're now they're part of this thing. There are travelogue types of classes where they talk about traveling to different places in the country or the world or whatever, the Caribbean, uh, how to get from 
point A to point B. We, we, you know, we used to call them pink and blue jobs on the boat. Um, right. There's some, you know, there's outfitting your galley and, and gourmet cooking on the boat. And, and then there's also uh, what kind of water maker and, and how do you how do you maintain your diesel engine and elect, uh, troubleshooting electrical problems and, you know, identifying thunderstorms. And, you, you know, so there's a wide, wide range of, of very practical classes that would be great for either power boaters or sailors. You, power boaters also have in the fall, obviously, you've got two weekends where you do the sailboat one weekend and you do the power boat this weekend. And you do that as well in the spring, but you don't mm-hmm. do it here in Annapolis. No, we make it even more challenging for our operations people in the springtime where we do our, <laughs> our sailboat show in Annapolis and our power boat show at the Bay Bridge Marina on, on Kent Island. Stevenville. And that's, that's coming up April 27th to the 29th. Right. And that's just on the other side of the bridge. Now, I know that you have a yard where you keep all of your floating docks and my number may be wrong, but you've got, what, like about a mile and a half or two miles of floating docks? I think we're up to a mile and three quarters at this point. If you put them end to end, we've got over 420 uh, 20 foot long floating docks. Um, and they are all, by the way, being splashed today for our spring show. So the crane is operating, the people are moving them, they're all, they're all going in Do the water. Do you take them across the bay for... We, we take uh, some. We work out of the marina. You know, for our for our Bay Bridge show, we work out of okay, the Bay so Bridge the marina. Okay, so the marina is somewhat empty. So, so they clear the marina for the boat show. Oh, okay. And uh, in these, these certain docks that are designated for the boat show. And then we bring about 50 more floating docks over there and add to that, make walkways between docks and, and expand it so we can put over 400 boats in, in that marina for the for the weekend. What do you do, just tug them across the bay? Or do you... We, we have, uh, yeah, we have... <laughs> we have six power boats that, that we are work boats. They're called um, Push, Shove, Yank, Pull, Showtime, <laughs> and something else. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're our work boats, and so we tow these, do- these docks across. The- it's the always boat. fascinating to watch the changeover and how it does. I know I've seen the, it, I'm, I'll, I'll throw a link into this in the show notes on the, uh, with a time lapse of it. I know yeah, it's typically be- on the top of the Marriott, and it's just like, in out in out in out it's absolutely amazing it's a it's a ballet on water and i don't know how uh you guys you guys do that i don't either um, <laughs> <laughs> did they tell you that when you bought that when you when you when you, when you bought the well thing? that was the thing that i first did but i started uh, one of the first things i did is i took over doing the water crew they call it the water crew i call it now the marina construction crew but um and uh, i had to learn that from scratch i i was i had many 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 sleepless nights trying to figure out how to do that it, it really is a, a, a choreographed ballet and um you know, if we have 250 sailboats in there in a closed marina, floating dock marina, first of all, we've we've driven 62 temporary pilings and brought in the mile and three quarters docks sure. to to do that to to build that marina. But the changeover means that all of those sailboats are gone in two hours. Right. And at that point in time, we're starting to reconfigure the marina and get ready for power boats. And we bring in some that evening. But that's on Monday evening and Thursday morning, we open a power boat show right. with 450 boats. Well, if nobody's ever seen it, one of the interesting things is that some of the sailboats that are up at the head of Ego Alley or power boats, whatever, are figuratively landlocked. Correct. Uh, so with, with with the docks that are in between there, so that's, you know, it's one piece. And I mean, you, it's not just coordination among your crews. It's coordination among the hundreds of vendors and suppliers that you have here that are that are pulling their boats out. And it all works great until somebody's engine breaks down or something happens and they didn't get here on time. And you've got a 15 minute window uh, opportunity to bring your boat in and they're an hour late. And do they, they get an invite next year? They always do. <laughs> we try and uh, we try and. Uh, impress upon them the importance of their <laughs> their being on time because punctuality is <laughs> yes important. and and you're a fairly relatively new owner to the boat show this boat show was was it established by ed hartman no actually um jerry wood was the founding um was the founder of the boat shows he owned the annapolis sailing school for many years prior to that and in 19 leading up to 1970 they decided it would be really smart to do an in-water boat show in october in annapolis and sailboat show it was probably a hard sell at the time it was everybody (laughs) thought he was out of his mind and um, the story goes that they all got here, and they were about probably. I've got I've got the picture, by the way, of the uh, of the original show in my office. So uh, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, and they they have um, they have big tents, and they have boats around there. 
so the, the, the story goes that these people all came there not expecting much. By the second day, they were driving their cars back to New York to pick up additional magazines because they had gotten rid of all their magazines the first day, and, they, and it, was, it was a big hit. Um, nobody expected that a fall boat show in Maryland was going to do any, anything at all, and yet it's become this iconic show, and it's the largest thing there is in the world in the sailing industry. Now, how long did he operate that before Ed Hartman had taken over it? Um, Ed Hartman and his partner, uh, Bennett Crane, were the attorneys for the company, and uh, they so they became partners probably 30 years ago, something like okay. that. Uh, this will be 50 years, by the way, in right. 2019, so that'll be a big year. So anyway, he uh, they, they became partners at some point during that time, and then in about uh, 2000 and... Um, Five, six, Jerry Wood died, and soon after his wife Kathy Wood died, and so that, that then and, and then Bennett Crane died, leaving only Ed Hartman remaining, and he was the partner. He was the remaining partner, right? Then. So uh, and owned it up until the time 2013 when we purchased. Okay, and you have purchased. You you had been the manager for a while on this. Yes, and so you would, you knew the drill. It wasn't just like you walked in and said, "Hey, I think I want to own a boat." Show. Right. No, I was very <laughs> familiar with the company, both and both sides. I mean, the 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 back office and the and the operational side of it. I, I've done every job that that the boat show has. I've I've built floors. I've erected tents. I've, I've done them all. So, I, I, so if, you, could, if you could clone yourself right now, you could you could effectively yourself personally pull this off. From start to finish. I mean, you, you, you said you've done it all. I have done or, it all. I didn't say I could do it all by myself. Well, okay, yeah, I don't, don't do it all really well. But, I mean, but no, no, I mean, okay, so you do know what's involved. I mean, you yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, and it's, it's been a great advantage to, to, to be able to run this company from, from a position of, well, I know that that won't work, or I know what we have to do, and I know how long it takes to do this and, and how to rebuild those things. And, and uh, you know, so I, and, and I, we've changed a lot. I'm, doing, I'm outsourcing a lot of. Uh, a lot of these functions that we used to, you know, we used to own all the floors and build, rebuild all the floors. And so a lot of things we're now outsourcing. But, um, yes, I have had the opportunity to be a part of uh, every aspect of building the shows and, and running the shows. Uh, hmm. So I did know it a little bit then. Right. Well, what, what happens in your off time between October we, and We now? don't really have one. Okay. Um, and that seems crazy. I, I, I joke and tell people I only work 15 days a year. We, uh, what we do is we finish up our boat shows about mid-October. Uh, it takes us a few day, a few weeks, I'm sorry, to kind of put all things away, get all the 420 floating docks out of the water and stack them up and get them ready for rebuilding. And then in November, we send out the renewals for the following year, and we start contracting and working on the following year, We're getting ready our, our advertising, ready for the spring show. Some of those deadlines start in, in December, and we uh, had a curriculum already created for Cruises University by the time uh, Thanksgiving came around, so we were able to promote that starting then, and we already have uh, over 170 people registered for Cruises University for springtime, so it's a, it's a substantial group of people that come from 20 or 25 states to, to do That's that. That's nice. So we work year-round. Right. And then you do take some time, I know, in November to go over to City Hall mm -hmm. and uh, monetarily thank the city. And what do you know? Do you know? I'll put you on the spot. Do you know the dollar value that you have contributed back or paid back to the city over In the our years? history? I, I would think it would be something in the $20 million range. Uh, and that's just a... Sign, that's just a guess, <laughs> and that's that's in checks written to the city. Checks written to the city. Our 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 contribution to the, to the city, which is based on a formula of ticket sales, and a, a base rent, rent um, is something in excess of a half million dollars each year. Do you have? And, and this is always such a hard number that I don't ever understand how to calculate. Do you have any idea of the impact that the boat shows have on the economy in a dollar number? There was a study done. It, it was a study. It, it's really. Um, a computer model that that develops this, and it's based on the attendance and based on the numbers of of exhibitors and and uh, some some drawing of information from hotels and even people's homes that are rented sure. and that kind of thing. Anyway, it uh, the 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 uh, estimate was about a hundred and twelve million dollar economic impact for those two weeks in October. Um, and that would be for a year. That would be each each October for two two weeks. But that's for a year. That's not a twenty year. Right impact. That's a that's one. A, that's, that's a single annual, year, annual hundred and twelve million dollar economic impact just in October. 
Well, I know it's, uh, I read an article about Airbnb, which obviously probably does very well during boat shows sure as well do. as um, yes. during commissioning weeks. But uh, they said that Marylanders made $43 million a year just in renting out their homes right? part-time for you know, events like this. And I know I look at all the Facebook forums and certainly during boat show commissioning week, certain Navy football games, you're always hearing like, does anybody have a place that's that's able to rent? And it's just, it's a sub economy that, that the boat show really has created for Annapolis. And you're right. It's boat shows and it's commissioning week. Uh, very similar. And what we have now, if we have, um, if we have 700 exhibitors in each of our boat shows and uh, each one of those has a half a dozen people that are coming to, to support their seven, sure. these 700 exhibitors, they come back year after year after year and rent the same homes every year. So, th- so these people have developed a long-term business with them that, that is fabulous for them. Right, Frank. It's great to see you again. How have you been? Yeah, how, yeah, exactly. How's the wife and the yeah. kids and everything else there? That's that's a lot of um, it's a lot of money. It's an all-year job, and uh, as I said, you guys are local. You're getting ready to move to uh, new digs too. Yes, we've uh, we've watched obviously the development of the 110 Compromise Building very closely for, <laughs> for a very long time. We are heavily invested in that in that area because so uh, we use that all those parking air lots around the 110 sure. Compromise Building as well as the city lots around that we rent. We pay a lot of money to those people each year to have their access to their parking lots and riparian rights in front of their buildings and and that was one that we really required. Um, we estimated that the previous development that was going to be placed on that property would have cost us about 113 exhibitors. 113 exhibitors uh, is, is a very large chunk of business gone from our show, and it, and it would start to minimize the value of the show, and people might say, well, why would I come to Annapolis? It's smaller than it used to be. I'll go to Miami. It, it would be devastating. So we've watched that very carefully, and we have now got a very close relationship, developed a relationship with the 110 Compromise developers, and we uh, have a long-term contract on the parking lot with them and a long-term contract on a, an office space on the second floor there. So that will be our permanent, permanent home. And is that that's on the second floor, right? It's on the second floor of the building, yes. It's a perfect place for the boat show. I mean, it's right in the heart of everything, and uh, you, you, get, you get, get to overlook the boat show. You, 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 you can probably <laughs> sa- save a couple of bucks on the, on the trailers. That you, that, that the you trailers have. will be history. <laughs> uh, that's you know that's phenomenal. What are um, what are the dreams that you have for the boat show? I mean, obviously you're coming up with something new every year. I mean, your exhibitors are coming up with something new. I know last year Hinkley had their all carbon electric. Uh, you know, there was yeah. no metal on the boat, and yeah. it was like you know, real electric boat and everything else, but, and they have their, their dreams. And I'm sure Tesla's probably going to be getting into this pretty soon. Um, what are the dreams for the boat shows? Well, we, one of the things about the boat shows is that obviously we have a very strong base. We have a, we have a, a very, we have a huge sailboat show and a very large power boat show, one of the largest, three largest in the country probably, but they don't stay that way unless you innovate and, and make things new and different and exciting and, and, and uh, you know, for, for our consumers and for the exhibitors. So, so we're always working on something, whether it be a, a demo doc or a, um, th- we did the brokerage show. So we added, Yeah, that was fairly new. And then the, the drive and sale or, or, or sale and buy and the sale. Take, or, the take the wheel program. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> there, was, there, was yeah. a, there was a name for that. Cruises University. Now we do first sale workshops. Uh, we have we develop vacation. I love names. I love the naming schemes. Mm-hmm. You know, Brokerage Cove and right. Vacation Basin was a big one, yes. and that was a hard sell. But now that's where the world books their charters. Now they come from from Croatia, from the Mediterranean. They come from the Caribbean. They and come, then you've got like the moorings and Sunsail and there. everybody else that's in yes. there. So. So we're always trying to do something new. Last uh, year, we developed a, a, a new rocking uh, VIP area, mm-hmm. and uh, that was done with uh, LH Finance and some people. Uh, we bring in different car features and different things. So it's always something. But one of the things that I had uh, I had really dreamed of was to redevelop that whole parking area between 110 Compromise and Fleet Reserve, which we did last year. We put up a huge structure tent in there and, and redeveloped that whole area. That's going to continue the, with development this year. So we're expanding the entrance into it. Uh, the, the tent is much larger. It's got a much uh, greater footprint. We'll start doing some of the same kind of thing over on uh, over on Dock Street side. We have a flooding problem. You may have you may yeah. have heard of. 
um, and we have to do something about that. So we're basically going to have to raise the street and the and the sidewalks of along Dock Street. Uh, I have no choice. Uh, people aren't can't be expected to display out of out of uh, to walk through and through knee, knee high water. And, yeah, I, my first year here, I had 17 inch high boots and I flooded them. So I know how deep the water got down around the, down our main gate. So there's always there's always something like that. The innovation of boat shows are fun. Boat no, shows are you, there's drinking, there are painkillers, there are crab cakes, there's there's all this other stuff that's going on in addition to boat shows. But we take our responsibility very seriously. Uh, this is the economic engine that drives the maritime industry, and particularly the sailing industry. The, the sailing world depends on Annapolis to be successful, and, and I, the responsibility is not lost on me. <laughs> I, I understand how important that is to those people. I want to touch you. You talked about the responsibility and, that, and everything else, and last year you guys undertook an initiative which was wildly successful, uh, and I screwed up the name of it because you like names and I like to screw them up <laughs> last year. The Caribbean, as we all know, was absolutely devastated by a series of hurricanes and there was uh, virtually I think you could probably count the number of islands that were unscathed on one hand uh, certainly some are worse than the other Puerto Rico still has 40 percent of the island without electricity I think right. is the last I heard and you decided to do something about it we did um, I mean we we don't ask for these things, of course. Uh, we we are always mindful of the fact that we could be hit by a hurricane sometime during those weeks. Uh, it's it's possible, but the, the this was a series of events, devastating, catastrophic events that happened leading up to the shows, and we said we just can't stand by and do nothing. And we've got this great group of people from around the world here. Why don't we see if we can sympathetic help? people? Yes, too. And, and they're all people who love to go down to the BVI and do charters, and, and that whole fleet was wiped out. Virtually right. the whole fleet was wiped out. Uh, Bitter End Yacht Club was gone. Right. Uh, they, you know, they invented the painkiller at, uh, at, at uh, Soggy Dollar Bar. I mean, the, so they're, right. they're um, and these, these were all hurt badly, and not just there, but also Puerto Rico, South Florida, uh, Texas. We developed, we decided that we would try and get these people to contribute money and we put some money up right seed money up at the beginning and uh my partners all did the same thing and and we developed hands across the transom to uh, to support uh, to, to support them and what we did is we brought in established relief funds that were already in, in business in operation and we organized all those together we promoted that and uh, we raised quarter of a million dollars for the quarter million dollars quarter million and this dollars. is on th now this is I, I know there were little drop boxes throughout the show mm -hmm. where you could soggy, take your soggy, soggy dollar dollars. and <laughs> drop drop it right in there yeah. you asked your vendors if they would like to participate and i know some of them stepped up in a really big way many did in a big way yes um and certainly the boat show contributed right, right off on, right off on your own and and inside of two weekends you raised a quarter million dollars yep and, and a lot of a lot of people stepped up to do a lot of really important things. That, by the way, in, in order to, to get that to, to make that happen, uh, we ran we, we threw a big party at the at the hotel. Right. Three hundred people came that night, and we had music and and uh, food, and it, it was it was wonderful. And uh, so a lot more money was raised that night too. Sure, and that was come one come all. And if you don't you donate forty dollars or show that you donated, or I think it was whatever the amount was, come on in and have a good time. Yeah, I think uh, I think your ticket in was to make a donation to the. You know, uh, oh, without, like without a doubt, yeah, without so. a doubt, and I think that the the boating community, whether it be sailboat or power boating, is really very tight knit. And you know, I mean, uh, obviously, the law of the sea is that you know you help help your fellow boaters out when they're in trouble. And, and you know, this boat show has been around here and supported the the maritime industry for f almost fifty years right. now, forty eight years. And uh, we want to make sure that they understood that we're always going to be here. We're little local guys that, that want to do this and want to make sure that that, uh, that the industry supported. So um, it, it was just it was a great thing to do. We, we felt great. Well, that's fantastic, Paul. We've got the two boat shows that are coming up. We've got the Annapolis Spring Sailboat Show on April 20th and 22nd right here. And that'll be basically in Eagle Alley, slightly off of the end of the dock. All of our um, spring show will be in Eagle Alley with some demo rides and that kind of thing. People can demo small boats and mm -hmm. paddle boards and that sort of thing in there. And uh, we have our first sail workshops and we have uh, in the springtime well over uh, about 250 people that get on small sailboats for short classes. They're, they're, they last about an hour and a half each and um, 
probably the first time they've ever been on a sailboat in many cases. But so we do we do that in both spring and fall, and over 500 people get on boats for the first time in sailboats. And, and, uh, and this is not. I mean, you mentioned a 40 foot sailor and stuff like that, which you know is, is going to cost a pretty penny to get there. Right. And this is by no means a a rich man show. If you will, I mean, it can, it can be, but I mean, you've got a small boat. If you wanted to get into sailing, you could buy a very small boat. Yes. Um, you could look get connections to yes. buy a used boat uh, from from a different dealer. Yep. If you've got a boat, you've got all of the different merchants that are there that sell the gear that goes with it, whether it be a sail or whether it be just you know electronics or right. you know whatever. So, it's. You know, certainly not. It's, it's it's great to go out and look. I mean, I walked the docks on both of the shows last year and uh, dreamt. Uh, <laughs> Don't we all? You know, it's like, wow, wow. Boat shows are for dreamers. There's no question. <laughs> oh, you know, but but the reality is, is that, you know, not all of us have the, the multi-million dollars to buy these boats. And, uh, and all the boats are not priced at multi-million dollars. So it's something that's accessible to everybody, which is really kind of a nice thing. Yes, to and, know. And, and you know, we, we get comments uh, on a regular basis about how, well, you know, if, if you can't afford a 53-footer, why would you go? Well, you know, we don't design the, the shows in terms of what boats, sure. we don't select the boats. It's, it's a market-driven event. So if the 53-footers are selling, the 53-footers are going to be in the boat show because that's what they're selling. Yeah, bo- boats, it, by their rules, or by definition almost i mean you you you've got to upgrade at some point <laughs> we call it two foot itis each I've, I've been through it all i've got i've had 13 sailboats so um but you know i i went out uh, a couple of years ago when i was starting to hear those comments and, and first of all when the economy tanked in 2008 mm-hmm. during our sailboat show by the way is when the stock market dropped 1500 points um the the, the years following that, it was very difficult, and the average guy did not have ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to, to to throw in a boat, and so that's when the larger boats became more popular because money people still had money. Right now, little by little, what's happened is that that small to mid-sized boat has started to come back and get stronger again because the economy for the small to mid-sized guy has has gotten better. So uh, if I looked uh, last year, we had thirty boats under thirty. Um, so that's not out of 250. That's not a huge number, but it, it's it's a start. And, and as long as those are selling, we have one company, American Sale, who has been there every year for 48 years, and he comes every spring and every fall. That certainly and, says something about and, you guys. And he sells little uh, prams and dinghies and up to about a 20 foot boat. And his whole business is is built around those those that size boat. So you know we like to use that as those kinds of boats as examples of of the of the mix too we're not fort lauderdale we're not right. mega yachts we have some 60 50 60 70 footers in the boat show but we have equal number of boats under 25 feet too so well i do i know you always have a um, a section of inflatables and mm-hmm. and and the mm-hmm. dinghies and whatnot and they're a lot of fun i mean we've got so much water we live in such a great area where we've got access to the water which is just wonderful uh it's a shame not to get out of it out of it there yeah. and i think with the uh, like you said, with the economy turning around, I mean, it just seems like it's opening up to a different, not a different, but an expanded audience. A new, a new audience. And, and you know, we, we, we want the younger people to come out and enjoy it. Uh, we as young people enjoyed it with our parents. And now those people are, are young couples and young families, and they're coming back and knowing that it's an important thing for a family activity as well. Uh, the, the really interesting phenomenon has been the, the growth of multi hulls The catamarans are, have just exploded on the scene. And uh, I think we had over 55 of those in the in the sailboat show last what's the, what's fall. what's the allure of them the stability the well, yeah they you don't you can be sailing and you don't spill your drink they're uh, they're very roomy. priorities okay <laughs> <laughs> they don't heal over like right. a, like a monohull does um so they're they're they sail very flat one of our classes that was offered one time was sailing flat on a lumpy sea uh, they, they, they sail flat. They're very wide. They, they uh, we chartered one one time. We had five couples on that boat. Four, four five staterooms and four heads. Uh, they're, they're, they're so they're very uh, commodious. They're very um, very fun to sail, and they don't rock. They're they're just very stable and very expensive too. By the way, interesting. I mean, it's, 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 interesting. It's, well, it's like two boats in one. That's true. That's true. You can cut it in half, and you can still. Yeah. <laughs> they still... call mono holes a half a boat. Right. <laughs> there, there you go. What can we expect at the um, Bay Bridge Boat Show? I mean, it's power. 
Bay Bridge is all power, and uh, on land and in the water, uh, I think we have over 400 boats already booked for the for the show this year. We do some things uh, there. We we do boat demos. So if you if you think, well, I'd really like to try out a 25 foot center console or something or other, you've probably got opportunities to to get on two or three different different boats that are of similar similar size. So there there are boat demos. There are some seminars. There is a huge food court in that boat show cocktail stations and um again priorities kids, <laughs> we have some kids activities uh we have fly rod uh making and tying and that sort of thing so there's there, there are a lot of different activities things to do during the day so who's the decision maker when it comes to a boat the well the, the man it's of course <laughs> the, well, uh, always i consider the the female the wife to be the gatekeeper Okay. Um, the, the, it's up to the man to sell the, the dream. And then once the dream has been bought into... Once the dream the, has been sold, the boat can be sold. Then, then you can go ahead and, buy and start looking for a boat. Yes. See, old, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> and that's, of course, an overstatement. In most cases, I mean, I, my wife and I, um, you know, we, we've sailed with our kids for many, many years in northern Michigan. And then uh, we sold her on the idea of, why don't we go live on a boat for a little while? And, and so we took our kids, two kids and a golden retriever, and we lived on a 39-foot boat for a year. And, uh, and uh, then later, we retired early and went off and did it again for several years. And if it were up to my wife, she'd still be out cruising. And I just got, uh, I, I just had to come back and uh, get on land again. So. I get tired of fixing boats. And you live on land now, though, right? I live on yeah. land, absolutely, yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Paul Jacobs, thank you very much for your time today. Make sure that you check out the Annapolis Spring Sailboat Show, April 20th to the 22nd, right here in Annapolis. And if you are one of those power boaters, which the sailboaters look down upon. We love them all. Um, well, you guys love them all, but, I mean, the sailboaters <laughs> look down on the power boaters, and the power yeah, boaters look no, down on the blow no, boaters. No. But the Bay Bridge Boat Show is April 27th to the 29th at the Bay Bridge Marina, which is just across the Bay Bridge. It's right there in that whole Hemingway's complex there. Correct. A lot of fun. You can get out on that show. You can get out into the water virtually immediately. You can uh, purchase a boat and sail away. On Monday, you could be boating with your family. That's right. And, Absolutely. Uh, and by the way, if you uh, the best place to find out all the information about all these is the, is uh, go to our website, which is just annapolisboatshows.com. You can pick on pick whatever show you want to look at, and it'll tell you everything about where to park and where to buy tickets and, and the whole thing. And you just have the four shows, right? We have four shows a year. Yep. Any more on the horizon? Uh, you know, like that. I, I'm not a young man, uh, John. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm fine with four shows. Uh, there are other opportunities continue to come up, and, and we we look at them. We we think we may um, eventually want to do something different, but the opportunity's got to be right because it's not easy to, to to create a new show. No, it's not. Not at all. Yeah. Well, definitely check it out. Also, make sure you follow us on our Facebook page, which is All Annapolis, or Twitter at I on Annapolis, because the Annapolis boat shows were so generous, and they did cough up some tickets to both of the shows. So we will be giving those away so you can experience the boat show firsthand. And I definitely encourage you to check it out. And certainly in the fall, if you've never seen the spectacle that is the fall boat show in Annapolis, the spectacle, the ballet, whatever you want to call it, definitely come down and check it out. It's, you know, if you have a boat, there's plenty of gear to buy. If you are looking at a boat, there's plenty of boats to buy. If you're just dreaming and thinking, wow, gosh, this would be great. It's a wonderful way to spend an afternoon. And I highly recommend it. I certainly commend Naples Boat Shows for what you've done for the city. Uh, you know, half a million dollars a year is a, a good chunk of their budget. You know, what, certainly what you've done for the local economy and what you did with Across the Transom. Hands Across the Hands trans Across yes. the Transom. Yes. It was phenomenal to raise that type of money inside of seven days, yes. essentially, which is what it was. We but, were very pleased, and, and thank you for saying that. But, Appreciate it. Thank you very much, and we will see you actually on the 20 and 22nd, 20 to 22nd, and the 27th to the 29th. Very good. And there you have it. That was Paul Jacobs from the Annapolis Boat Shows, the general manager and one of the owners. I hope over that 30 minutes or so that you learned something new, because I know I certainly did when I sat down and spoke with him. Just a little bit of a different view of the boat shows, which are such an intrinsic part of our community here in Annapolis. Once again, make sure you give us a rating on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you see our podcast, give us a rating. If you've got a spare few minutes, leave us a review. That helps as well. And of course, if you're looking to score a pair of tickets to either of the boat shows, 
Be one of the first five to send us an email at info at themarylandcrabs.com and specify which show you want to go to, and we will send out two tickets to you. And these are hard tickets, actually, so include your mailing address as well. It can be your work. It doesn't have to be your home. We promise not to stalk you. Well, I do. Tim, I don't know. If Tim shows up at your work, just give him a beer and he'll go away. Anyhow, that's about it for the Maryland Crabs this week. Next week, we're keeping into a maritime theme, and we are going to be talking with Jen Kay, who is the owner and one of the captains of the Schooner Woodwind. And what's so special about the Schooner Woodwind other than they're the pretty white boats that sail out of the Annapolis Marriott? They're celebrating, check this out, 25 years of business in Annapolis. And anybody that does business in Annapolis knows that's like 150 years anywhere else. So make sure you tune in next week. We will have Captain Jen Kay from the Schooner Woodwinds, and we will see you next week. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.